Cool. And live. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Miniac. And tonight we are doing another live stream, and it's going to be an interview with a motoring advisor. So on here tonight, I have Nick Feist Hamill from, was it Mini of Orlando? From Orlando uh, Mini. I'm sorry? Orlando Mini. Orlando Mini, okay. From Orlando Mini, and he has a fantastic Instagram account called O Town Mini Deals. So go over there and check that out sometime. He has some pretty cool posts, pretty cool stories. He always has something interesting to share, including I think you had one time you had a mini sitting out back that was traded in that got smashed in by a axle flying off a truck or something. <laughs> yeah, it was like a like a double tire with the rim on it with the axle. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where on looked like yeah, punched by the incredible hole. It was crazy. Yeah. Like so much for so much for that car. I'm sure you could have. I'm sure you could have sold it on the lot. Now you couldn't. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it was my customer's trade-in too, and she loved that car. The name was Brown Betty. Brown uh -huh. Betty was, it had eyelashes. <laughs> it's just a shame Crazy. when something like that happens. But um, we're we're. I decided to have you on because I've always wanted to. I've wanted to chat with it with a motoring advisor, see what it's like to be a motoring advisor at a mini dealership. And you've worked at you prior worked at an Audi dealership. So right. I'm sure the dynamic from going from an Audi dealership to a mini dealership is very, very different. Oh yeah. It was, um, the, the biggest difference was the, the fun factor, like the professionalism was there, which is what I liked. Um, but the fun factor, every car that I sold to me was a fun car. Like, cause selling an A4 isn't that much fun. Selling an R8 is a lot of fun, but to me selling every mini, you can make it fun. Mm -hmm. which is cool. Well, that's, that sounds, that sounds, that sounds really cool. What is the, I'm sure, let me try to think of a good question to ask. I didn't like plan anything ahead here before I get to that. Though, just cool. say, I want to say, Hey, to futuristic industries, he was a, the, the kid there, he was a guy, he was a kid who came into the mini dealership the other day when I was happened to be there and saw my car. So, Hey to you. And um, anyway, let me get back to that. So there was, so I was trying to think of a question. Um, What's the best? What's the best day you've had at the at a mini at the mini dealership? Oh man, the best day. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one, man. The only reason why because all pretty good days. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the best day when I was on a, I was on a mini training trip, so it's mini related. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife just had her baby, our, our baby about two weeks prior. We were trying to get a house. You know, we waited a year and two months for this thing. And I'm, I'm at a training. I get a phone call from my realtor and he says they're going to do the deal. So it was cool because I was in a mini training. You know, people were like doing their thing. You know, I mean, how mini training is. It's fun. Everybody's got the stuff on the table and the candy. I've, and seen, I've, seen, how, I've, seen, how, I've seen how it's done. I've had, I've had, I've had yeah. friends like put, send pictures to me to show me what's going it, on. It's fun. I mean, I was tired. It was like in Boston. Like they flew me in. I got there like at 12 in the morning. I had to be there and fly out. It was crazy. But that was a, it was a good mini moment because it was like I called my wife. I was like, we got the house mm -hmm. and I'm in Boston. But yeah, it was cool. Okay. So I have to ask them, what's the worst day you've had as a, as a motoring advisor? I don't know. It's like, I, I don't know if I can pick out a worst, but usually it's like if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. like for me, it's like, I swear I do a prayer on every car that I sell. Like new pre-owned, like... Like, because I know how it is, you know, I'm a, I got, I'm married, I got two kids. Mm -hmm. So I realized like when I'm selling something to somebody like this could be, this, like this could be their livelihood. Mm -hmm. This could be when they work for their, their whole life. So if I hear like something went wrong or something broke or the car left them stranded, it doesn't happen often. I know, believe it or not, but it's like when it does, like for me, it's like, a, ugh. Like it hurts. Like when I see them in service, man, I want to see them getting like a service. Like if I hear just like a problem, it's like, damn, excuse my language. But it's like, I, I give my customers my, my cell phone numbers. Like, like if they're ever like in a real pinch, it's like, yo, call me. <laughs> like, Cause it's like, that's to me, it's like, oh, it's the worst. Yeah. I think, that, and that's kind of the thing with motoring advisors. When you buy a mini, you become part of this huge family. Correct. And it like it doesn't. It seems that it doesn't matter what mini dealership you go into, you will be treated. You would tr be treated like a like part of the family when you go into it. There's some that aren't like that, but I know that the vast majority they are like that. That they're you're one of the old school, and maybe like a little bit like I've been at my dealership for about ten years, and mm -hmm. it's like I've been selling cars for twenty one years. 
So I used to work at a Nissan dealership, which I, I, I like the product. I'm a car nut. Mm. I just didn't like the selling process. Yeah. You know, sold Audis for, for a while. I love the fact that the professionalism was just the, the product was a little boring. So but with minis, it's like the customers, it's way different. It's just mm -hmm. it's way more fun. It's like the customers are so laid back and chill and like a lot of good memories, a lot of good moments because they let you more, like you get more into their lives. Like I'm, if they want to know about me, I tell them about me. You know, mm -hmm. they, I had two family members die of COVID at the beginning of the year and my customers knew that. And because they knew like, man, okay, Nick's not feeling good right now, but he, they know I'm giving a hundred percent. And I think they appreciated that. Like, like, hey, you don't got to do this. It's like, no, yeah. no, no, I'm going to do this for you. They're like, dude, you're doing everything. And it's like, well, this is actually helping me get through. So if I can make your experience amazing, because like everyone's going through it right now. Like that's yeah. the biggest difference between now and before. It's like with COVID, it's affecting everybody. It's a worldwide thing. So if we understand like, okay, someone could be going through something, you know what I mean? Like you don't know what someone's going through when someone comes on the lot. It's like, even though if I'm going through something, you know, they could be going something like more, which could be maybe what this is why they're there. They need a change in their life. Maybe something good happened. Who knows? And these people are willing to share this with you, like with confidence. So it's like, you know, OK, I'll share a piece of myself with them. And, you know, and I've made good friends from that, which is really cool, because like, like anyone that knows me, it's like it's not normally what I typically would do. But with many customers, it's different. Mm -hmm. I think I have like one person that I know. I'm still friends with on Facebook the, from Audi, you know what I mean? But like many, I got, I got a bunch of them. Yeah. And that's kind of the whole thing. It's like this huge, you become this part of this huge family with many. Hey. Um, it's cool. Yeah. I mean, I've, uh, I could definitely say that as far as the pandemic has been concerned, when it comes to auto sales, it's affected auto sales all over the place, but it seemed like it hit many sales really hard because the cars are shipped in. So not having not having cars available, not or having the plants closed, it certainly made things a little bit difficult. And I know it made it challenging for some dealerships to even still stay in business. I know if, I know a handful closed down because they couldn't just they couldn't stay open anymore. Correct. I mean, we're we are blessed that we have been in Orlando since the beginning. Mm -hmm. We have an amazing customer base. I mean, we had a, a Daytona dealership, but unfortunately, it just didn't work out. So a lot of those customers are coming back to us, you know, through this, like, man, they've been there. Mm -hmm. you know, I was furloughed for two months last year and it was amazing because I got to spend the time with my kids. But to tell you the truth, when I came back, I was so happy to talk to these people. Like just, I was used to talking to kids all day, like all day talking to kids. Like, and then finally I could talk to my many customers and I had these, like my first day back, man, my head was in a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Right. And these customers, they waited for me. And they called me up like I was like, oh, yeah, like because they called me when I was like the first month when I was on furlough. Like, OK, well, wait till you come back. And they remembered and literally called me and said, hey, you're there. Right. I'm like, yeah. And they came in. They ended up buying a car that day. And it was like it was really amazing that they remembered. And I made sure because of that, because the way I work is like, man, you do something good for me. I have to do something good for you. And like from something like that, I was like, oh, my gosh, I gave these people like the and I give everybody the the red carpet, but man, I was like, man, that was really cool. Cause I needed that too. Like first day back, I was like, Oh my gosh, it was just good to talk to somebody. So you make it, you made enough of an impression on these customers that they, they were, they were willing to wait for you to come back before they could, so they could buy a car from you. Right. And they understood. They're like, Hey, you know, cause everyone, they were going through it too. You know, no one really knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew I had kids. They knew my kids were, you know, I let, I let them know my kids. I'm, and now I'm a, I'm, I'm the teacher. I'm doing the at home schooling. Like I did all that stuff. And like, they were cool, they understood and they, they related to it. You know what I mean? So they were like, when I came back and they, they, they could see, man, I was like, I was like, hello. <laughs> I was just, I was just happy to talk to someone that understood. They were previous customers of mine. So it made it even better. It worked out, they bought a car. And like, it, it's been cool ever since. I mean, there's been some crazy stuff that's happened. I know for a lot of people, but it's been, it's been a blessing. So you've been at, you said you've been at, uh many of I say a mini of Orlando Orlando mini Orlando mini sorry I keep <laughs> it's cool man you understand it's Orlando. late man it's like it's like nine away <laughs> man like everyone's sleeping so it's you've cool. been at Orlando mini for cool. you said 10 years now 10 years yeah it was uh, January 11th of 2011 so you Crazy. were there you were there right around the time that the facelift for the R56 came out oh so good and the countryman yeah. 
and the Countryman. You were there from the Gas was like four twenty a gallon. Yeah, it was like it was crazy. But you've also yeah. were there when you were also there when the paceman came through the yeah. roadster, the coop. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you were there for you were there for all the good all, oh, the, all the good stuff. Like yeah. it, it was it was crazy in the beginning because we had just 2011, so that was only a couple of years away from the the housing crash. Yeah. Right? So I, my wife had just graduated. She finally just got her master's degree. You know, the whole time it was just me working. So I was working at Audi. You know, my wife is getting her master's. You know, working for free. You know, finally she graduates. I I go to to many. And the big thing is, I will have to say, it's Fields Auto Group. I'll put a shout out to them, man, because these guys, like especially through this pandemic, I don't care what anybody says, man. They did amazing, absolutely amazing. So yeah, it was a, uh, it was cool. It was, it was a good time, man. Cause everything was crazy. You know, I, I didn't have any kids at the time, you know, the R56, man, that everyone knows that was a sweet ride, man. Manual transmission. My, um, my first, my first mini was an R53, but my second one was an R55 Clubman. That's cool. Yeah. Third one was an R56 Cooper S with the tuning kit. And this was a rare one. It was a 2013. It had the tuning kit. Ice chocolate paint, which was really unusual, yeah. and it had the punched leather, and it had the JCW gauge pods. That's cool. And it was a it was a beautiful car. That car unfortunately got hit by a truck eight months later. <laughs> that sucks. But it did not have that car nearly as long as I had I had intended. <laughs> and yeah. then right after, and then right after that car, I got a 2014 R55 JCW Clubman with the Recaro interior. And that thing was that thing was a rare was a rare one. Yeah, I'm still chasing my my perfect mini. When I first got the store, I built a, a 2012 manual transmission, JCW body kit. I did pepper white, pepper white roof. Mm -hmm. Wheels came in silver, which I didn't like, so I had them powder coated like a satin black. And then I had the tailpipes powder coated satin black. At the time, the tune there was nothing available, so I had it shipped out to California. They did an, like an NM engineering tune on it. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was like always as as a kid, you would I would always build this front wheel drive car. Remember back in the day, it was the Civic Si. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you watch the Italian job. You're like, oh, what the heck is this? And you see this, <laughs> you know, you think you see the supercharged car, just like holy well, we crap. Also, we also that. remember, we also remember the Fast and the Furious, which ruined, which seemed to ruin every Mitsubishi Eclipse out on on yeah, the. like. <laughs> Bro, like when if like if you watched, I mean, I know a lot of these young kids haven't even seen that movie anymore, man. But go watch the Italian Job. It's yeah. really good. I'm telling you, I swear, it's good. And dude. not just and not just the new one. Go watch the original one with yeah, my watch the OG. Watch yeah. the new one, which is kind of the old one, I guess. Just go watch it. I'm telling you, it's like there was a pepper white one on there that like my car was basically that car. Mm -hmm. And man, when I, I turned that car on because I had I had a kid, I was telling my manager, I was like, dude, this I put a lot of money into this car and it was clean. I put like three coats of seal jet on that thing. That thing was just shining. Yeah. It was a gooky. So they bring the car over. He goes, oh man, that thing is like, dude, it didn't even make it to the lot. It didn't even make it to the lot. Like the yeah. kid that got that car, and I prayed, he, he was like military, which is awesome. <clears throat> I was like, because I was like, okay, man, whoever has this car, this is, I put a lot of, I put everything into that car because I knew it was going to be like my last toy for a long time. Yeah. But it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's always, there's always another, there's always another mini that you'll find that you'll fall in yeah. love with. Like, like there, there is one, there is one, one mini that I saw, and I loved this car. It was at the mini deal. It was at my mini dealership, but it was chili. It was chili red. It was a Cooper, manual mm -hmm. transmission, chili red, white roof, black mirror caps, JCW appearance package with the silver JCW wheels, and it had a Recaro interior. At the time that I saw that car, they wanted twenty six, twenty seven thousand for it, and I looked at that car. I'm like, if I could find, I'm thinking, I'm thinking back on it now. If I could find this car again, I would buy it because it was just, it was a Cooper, yes, but it was the perfect, uh, perfect spec for a Cooper. It had, it had just everything just right. It was just perfect with with, with what it had. Oh, and yeah. those are the ones. Those are the ones that are so hard to find these days. They're just like the odd. Sometimes they're the odd option or just the quirky kind of configuration. Right. Like I had a like I had a R56 Cooper S 2008 R56 Cooper S was my little race car. That thing had one option from the factory, and it was the different. It was the front limited slip differential. That was it. 
the JCW tuning kit that was on the car wasn't added until the until the second owner of that car. Damn. So what do you think, like with the new one? I know since we have this facelift right now, we're going to be with this new car for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. What do you think, like, Mini's going to have to do? I mean, because the hard top is, like, it's our, it's Mini's Porsche 911. Like, you have to have an iconic car that people want to buy and drive, or at least, like, lust after. And even though it might not fit to the lifestyle, it's, it's why they, like, I look at a countryman or a clubman. Yeah. You have to make something that's, like, fun to drive because it's, like, I feel like I, I didn't get it as much on this F-Series car in the beginning mm -hmm. as much as the previous one. Even though the previous one was, man, it was slow, but, man, people just get in that car and it's, like, they would understand. It just felt different. I mean, with the, I mean, with the F cars, I with the F cars, I haven't experienced anything that would be on that would be. I know that they're different than the R chassis ones. I know my R fifty sixes were different than my R fifty three. My R my F fifty six is different than my R fifty sixes. It's they're all different cars, but mm -hmm. it's kind it's kind of interesting. It's like people loved. There are people out there who love to hate on the current generation mini. They love to just bash the car to pieces, and just say horrible things about it. I'm like. Why are you saying such horrible things about a car that's basically perfect, aside from the fact that you don't like the styling? <laughs> yeah, I think, and plus, like, you have to look at it during the time, like, what was going on? What was going on in in the world? Because yeah. back then, even with BMW, because with the, pre the, the previous three series or five series, they tried to go, like, more mass market. So everything was a little bit softer. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of went back to what worked for them. And I'm thinking with Mini, it's like, okay, so yes, we're a part of BMW and our hands are tied in the sense we share certain chassis. But it's like, okay, what are we gonna do on this next one? Are we gonna add more steering feel to it? Is it gonna have better gas mileage? Is it gonna have more power? Yeah. You don't yeah. have to have a lot of power, but at least like give me like 201. Like I mean, and that's what that's what many did. That's what I took when I last talked to one of the sales regional sales reps, they said that's what they were doing with the fourth generation mini, is they were going. They were they weren't going to go back to R fifty three or R fifty three territory, but they were going to try to bring it back to some semblance of R fifty six. Yeah, bring it back, medium, bring the right? body back down a little bit, simplify the simplify some of the stuff. What I figured out though, based on some, based on the artist renderings of the facelift car that we're currently getting, is the fa the drawing something seemed off to me, and I kept looking at them. And I'm like, what is what is off of these drawings? The roof seems sloped differently. There were some style lines that were added to the back of the car, and I finally figured out that I this is what I think. I think that the artist renderings, what we're seeing on the facelift car, those styling cues and everything are going to be on the fourth generation mini, and we're just getting a preview. Possibly, because if you look at the like the four series has those air curtains on the side. Yeah, very similar. To this particular car, it looks good. Like, I still can't believe they got rid of Caribbean Aqua. Yeah. Like, I mean, come on, come on. Like, you get rid of Ice Blue. What, what sucks about Caribbean Aqua is they offered it on the hard tops over in Europe. You, <laughs> could, get a, you could get a hard top in Caribbean Aqua if they could. If they had you, offered that, you know what Mini's going to do. In about two years, they're going to do a special edition like they did with the Ice Blue cars because mm -hmm. you know everybody wants the Ice Blue. Yeah. Bring it back for a little special edition. And because it's crazy, like I, I was surprised on how many people like the Caribbean Aqua. It's like it's not yeah. my color, neither is ice blue, but I see why people like it. But people like literally like like be drawn to it. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a dramatic color. But the other thing is, I like I actually kind of like zesty yellow personally. It's what I actually the zesty yellow, the new zesty yellow that's coming. I really I really like it. But um, uh, it looks like Sal, Sal Pablo uh, yellow. I probably, I probably killed yeah. that. I'm sorry. I said zesty yellow. Quick to answer futuristic industries before he goes to before he has to go to bed. Um, my favorite Mini Cooper model. I like them all. Nick's favorite Mini Cooper model is but, like right now. I would do yeah, a JCW. JCW what? Clubman. Clubman. JCW Clubman. Yeah. Oh, I, go. I got two kids. I'm gonna tune it. There we go. We're gonna get some power out of that thing. Yep. Well, there you. Well, there you go. There's your. There's your answer to our fa to our to our to our favorites. Um. But what I was gonna say is, I like the zesty yellow that's coming out on the new convertible. What I mm -hmm. want them to do is put the zesty yellow on the hard tops as well. <laughs> you can black everything out. Like. Yeah. I can't. It's crazy. Like you can't. Oh my god. Can you imagine a hard top, all blacked out? And because I love yellow. I love yellow. Yeah. Like 
Dude, come on. Okay, it's like, okay, Manny, you are the convertible. His guys. <laughs> if any of you guys are watching, you guys, you're having crazy sometimes. But trust that's me, I love. Mini, trust me, I know for a fact that Mini USA is watching. I know for a fact that Mini UK is watching. And I know for a fact that the folks at Plant Oxford are watching. <laughs> Hopefully Amanda's watching. Dude, she's killing it. <laughs> I know there's a lot of there's a lot of people watching. Um well there was a thing what do you think of the new multi-tone roof? It's cool. I mean it's uh I think it's cool that we're actually doing it. Like I want to see it in person. I think being that they're all going to be a little bit different. Yeah. It's kind of unique. Um it doesn't seem like it's a, something that's hard for me to do. Like I don't have to do anything crazy when I'm ordering the car. All I got to do is click the option then let the factory do with whatever they got to do. Yeah. As long as that's all, that's all I have to do, and my customer doesn't have to worry about nothing, boom, I'm good. Five hundred dollars for that? Okay. My only, my only thought process with that, and I was talking to a service service manager one day, and they, and I said, so what would you do? What would the paint shop do if they had to fix this roof? And he's like, you blend it in, baby. <laughs> you blend it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. I remember they're not all the same. Yeah, I mean, it's, it it, it's going to be an interesting roof color. I heard, I yeah. heard, I heard from a, I heard from a reliable source is going to be potentially a couple more different variations coming, including like a red variation. That they can, if, if they can, if they can incorporate something sporty, mm -hmm. like into a JCW. Yeah, I'm curious what that would look like. You know, that like be a red. Like imagine a imagine a three tone yeah. red fade on a JCW on a JCW. Yeah, that'd be kind of sick, man. That'd be kind of yeah. crazy. But I and also. Then, Go ahead. Look, the belt line, like, okay, they do, they're doing the black. Yeah. Supposedly. I haven't seen it yet. I looked into the VPC, whatever the thing is. It's not there. Maybe my, it's dealership there. Has, my dealership has one sitting in the back. <laughs> okay. I, I need to see this thing, but it, it's, it's only been 20 years, right? But okay, we have it, right? <laughs> so maybe if we start with the black. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Maybe different colors, like maybe like red. I don't know. That would be kind of cool. You'd have a whole black out car with some accents. Mind. Yeah. A friend From the manufacturer, mine, that would be cool. Yeah, a friend of mine has a JCW Countryman with a chili red belt line. Yeah, I mean that. If you can get that from the factory, and I can order something like that for a customer, imagine with that multi-tone roof with like the red, like oh, in yeah. like brakes. Like, dude, oh my god, that would be amazing. It would look. It would look really cool. It would. It would definitely go back. It would bring the customers back to when Mini was, <laughs> as people are saying, when Mini used. There are people out there that say, "What happened to when Mini used to be fun?" <laughs> and it's dude, we're, we're bringing that back. I, yeah. I like dude, with my customers. I make sure like when they're ordering a car, this thing is a hundred percent, like hundred percent, like complete. Yeah. So it's like you, you got you got to bring the love back into it because always look at like okay, if you won the lottery and you can buy your dream car, how do you expect the the experience to be? You expect it to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it is like, hey man, if someone's gonna spend thirty five thousand dollars, if if I can build the sweetest mini. I can build for this guy, like the guy that did the 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 BRG four, everything blacked out with the peanut yeah. butter. Dude, that car was nice, man. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this guy, he has a nice mini. Anyone that respects minis will look at that car, and be like, man, you really did it. He did it all the way. Yeah, he didn't do it. There's nothing more he could have done, like when you're ordering it. You know, he can hope he can black out the certain things because it's not an option right now. Yeah, I mean, you you basically have gotten you basically you can spec out every single yeah. possible if they can option. unlock more stuff for us to do for our customers man we can the ones that are passionate about doing these things because there's yeah. some i get it some salespeople, it's not their thing they're like they, the customer gives them a bill they build it exactly the way it reads they don't even look through it to see if they can add something to it or if it doesn't even look right you know what i mean if you put the yeah. time in you've seen enough cars you have an idea of where this customer is trying to go you know, you can you can figure it out. And man, it's like when you create that perfect build and the customer sees it for the first time, like when the car comes in, I'll send spy shots. You know what I mean? It's kind of get them excited. I never send them the whole shot. Yeah. But no, it's, it's cool. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's basically it's a whole kid in a candy, kid in a candy store. Yeah. Thing. I, mean, I have never I have never actually had the opportunity to build a mini exactly how I want it for myself. There's only one. There was only one, and I built it for. I helped the dealership build it, and that was an electric. That was an electric Cooper SE, and I specced it out: chili red, white roof, iconic trim, lounge leather interior, roulette spoke wheels, and basically perfect, exactly how I would picture picture this car. Because I think if you're going to do, if you're going to have a little fun here, it needs to be chili red, and if it's going to be chili red, it needs to have a white roof. Cool. There's no other. There's no other way to do chili red yeah. except. Like when you, when you order your own car, 
it definitely changes things. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it could ruin it for you too, as well, because like then you're not gonna you're not just gonna accept something on the lot. You know what I mean? Because it has to be perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what, unfortunately for myself, that's what I did when I, when I did my mini. I did every single thing to the point where like literally eight months before I knew I was gonna trade my car. Like I put the the GP2 diffuser on the back of it. That thing was three hundred something dollars. Yeah. There's no way I could do that right now. Cause, you know, I got kids. You know, I got daycare, private school. You know, three hundred sixty bucks just to throw on something to know I'm gonna turn it in. Just stupid. But I could do it back then, and that was the last, very last thing that I had to do to the car. And I was like, you know what? Before I turn this car around, I'm gonna do it. And yeah. I did it, and I felt good. I, I didn't care if I was throwing away the money. It was like, you know what? This was my childhood dream was to build my perfect car. The car that like, okay, if I died right now, I could say I built that car. That yeah. car is perfect I, to the T. Nobody had a car like that. I put a lot of time in that car. So now when it's time to get another mini, it's like it has to like live up to that car. And if it doesn't or what that car gave me, it's like, but that's for me, of course, you know, I mean, everyone's different. Yeah. And see, my big thing right now is there's one piece I want to, there's one piece I want to finish the exterior of my car and it's the rear, diff it's the rear diffuser. <laughs> And I, if it's I, something that's in your head, you got to do it. Yeah. Well, see, I ordered one. I ordered one, but the problem is they're all back ordered because Germany has to make more. You know, man, when it comes to being a car enthusiast, you got to be patient. You know, it's like back I mean, ordering I, is like I brief, that's I the brief, life, man. It should be like something should say. You need a shirt that says back order. That should be oh, a that's shirt. Fu that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. I should make. I should actually. Dude, I should you, like, you, like these hey, stickers. Hey, whoever that dude, sticker says back do order. It. Come back order. You split that with me, homie. We got. I'm, this is being yeah. filmed. It's you like I ordered. It. I ordered my diffuser, but it's back ordered. <laughs> exactly, back ordered. Just the shirt, back ordered. Bumper stickers, everything's back ordered. Especially now with COVID, bro. Everything is so slow. Yeah, I mean, er, everything. Everything was slow. Yeah, but yeah. I'm. But like, um, there's that. I'm like OCD about things with my car. But if you want to talk about a guy who's OCD, I'm going to show everybody this picture. This is that sales manager that I, that I talk about all the time. That's his mini and. This thing is incredible, iconic trim, enigmatic black with, and he had the red accents all wrapped in purple. And there's actually, yes, that is a JCW GP splitter yeah, on the front and a GP grill and a GP wing. <laughs> Bro, if, if you tell me he has two kids and he's able to have this car, I'm in. No, he doesn't. He has a, he has a girlfriend who has a BMW M240i, I want to say. That's nice. Yeah. Good thing. So, he, he's doing his thing, man. Before yeah. he has kids, you know, telling you, they care in private school. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know. Person, I don't know. I don't know if uh, he actually wants to have kids or not. It's a, it's, it's completely okay. up to him. And his, I mean, up just, to him. just to let all you people out there that are thinking about doing this. <laughs> okay. They care in private school. It's $23,000 a year. That's yeah. After, you can buy a mini every single year. It's crazy. But you know what? It's for the kids. <laughs> you know the kids on the show. No, and my brother and sister in law are expecting their third kid. So uh good for them, man. This is a kid friendly show. You know, yeah. many they uh they my brother are like they're expecting their third kid and they bought they bought something that has mini in it. It's a minivan, but <laughs> yeah, dude, that's genius. Minivans are amazing. You got kids, I get it. The doors slide open by themselves, you can just walk right in. Yeah, you got the TV. What? And the dude, bro. I mean it's imagine. Amazing. I mean, vacuum imagine, cleaners. Yeah, I mean, imagine if Mini actually they discontinued the vacuum cleaner on the on the Honda Odyssey because the company went bankrupt that made them. What? <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. There's no and more. Dude, vacuum. They need they need to get like a like a Hoover or something. They need to put something yeah. back. Man. But um, the vacuum cleaner, that's a that's a no. That's a no deal. Now, how many how many do you think they'd sell if Mini if Mini actually made a minivan? Like none. None. <laughs> like nothing. Like dude. <laughs> You get that one person. You get the faithful. You get the faithful person that's like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. Why? Because I love Mini. Yeah. And then they'll buy it, and we'll love them for it. And they'll, and and if they're and if they're ordering the car for me, it's gonna be the best looking minivan Mini you've ever seen in your life. If they want to black everything out. We're blacking everything out. Yeah, imagine the, imagine a JCW minivan. <laughs> Dude, there was a thing I saw on Carlton Drive the other day. It was um, it was like the Volkswagen bus but like in gti spec it was like a concept i'm like okay i, I kind of do that because it had you know that old school like yeah. 18 style like but with like the gti kind of front end i'm like okay but it has that motor in it you can tune that thing that'd be a pretty crazy freaking yeah fan. I mean, did you see did you see the uh pictures of the 
it was a rendering of a Hellcat powered uh, Chrysler Pacifica. I would drive that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I would drive that. Like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if I had the money, I'd like, like, I'd like, 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 I'd like to do burnouts in the in the student in the school pickup uh, pickup aisle. <laughs> be amazing, man! Like, oh, every day would feel so good because you have like the feeling of that power, and the kids would just would be quiet. You know what I mean? Have that peace yeah. and quiet. And then power. Oh. Meanwhile, you're oh. drifting around every corner. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm a, I want the all-wheel drive, man. You got to give me yeah. the all-wheel drive system from the the Cherokee. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I want to do four. I want to do four-wheel burnouts, but you're gonna put a Hennessy kit on that thing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, dude, you would see me on the dog dads. will be on that car. Yeah. Oh, amazing, man. <laughs> but um, what I was gonna say. Oh, um, what do you think of the, what are your thoughts on the, you've seen some of the spy photos of the fourth gen mini, I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, to me, it looked like the, the windshield was a little more raked. Yeah. Which is cool. I, is it like a sportier, like stance to it? Like as long as it's nice and tidy, what I care about is like, okay, does it feel light? You know what I mean? It has, it has to be like rock solid. Cause you know, the build quality is going to be there. Yeah. But does yeah. it feel light? Is there steering feel? Cause you know what the BMW steering feel lately hasn't been as good, but many steering feel like they, they can tune it to the way they want it. Um, I'm cool with the dual clutch transmissions. You know, those, those are popping off. Like the shifts on those are really nice. Um, I don't know. Well, there's, there's no substitute for a manual though. <laughs> Correct, but you know we 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 need those numbers. That, that's the thing. Unfortunately, these days, without the credibility, you have to have. And if and the thing with the manual transmission, I I agree, but it has to be a good manual. You know, yeah. if you have a bad manual, oh, it's even worse. Like the clutch is weird, the shift is just bad. Like oh, it makes every shift just terrible. Like you well, get into we an. F we can definitely say that Getrag got it right with the uh, six speed manual. Yes. At, least, at least that manual. Now, manual transmissions in other cars are kind of meh. <laughs> the Miata has a really good manual transmission, man. That Miata, it's like a bolt action rifle. I think it's like crook, crook. I hear the Type R has a really good transmission. Um, I haven't driven one yet. I look forward to it. Yeah. Um, but I was, well, I was going to say, I someone commented on one of the videos I did on the fourth generation Mini. They were looking at the pictures and they said that well, from their observations, based on the longer wheelbase, because they lengthened the wheelbase, they shortened the overhangs, but based on the longer wheelbase and what they saw underneath the car, it looked like they had a large battery tray underneath the car, which, yeah, that one they, said, which they said, based on their observations, this is going to be a 300 mile, mile range electric mini. If they can get the 200, I'd be happy. <laughs> you know, three, 300 would be nice, but I mean, 200, give me 220. Yeah. But then I, but then I, but then I heard from someone else who shall remain nameless that they don't think this is the G56 fourth generation Mini that's being tested. They think this is either – there's two vehicles that have been being developed right now. There's either – they said they, they said they're working on another – they're working on like a sixth model, another Mini model that's going to that's gonna be in there. They have also were talking about a subcompact crossover. Correct. And there's a, either going – they said it's either going to be called – they're working on one that's either going to be called the Rocket Man – or they're actually working on one that's going to be called the Paceman. So they might be bringing the Paceman back. And he was looking at the pictures and he thinks, I'm not sure if that's the G56 Cooper at, or Cooper that's going to replace the hardtop or if that's the Paceman. And I, I was know. and I was like, if that's the Paceman, then that would be then that would be incredible. But it looks it looks small too small to be the Paceman. Yeah, I think the, what the Paceman should pop, probably be for. To sell cars, it's going to have to be a bigger vehicle, clearly. I mean, you, you have to make it sporty because I know they're making a, a bigger vehicle, you know, a bigger countryman, I guess you would say, full size, which is still going to be many, but almost like a like an X6 style or X4 style where it's like you have a little bit of a slope in the back, kind of has that sporty look to it because that's what the pace when used to be it was the two-door version of the countryman, it had the slope roof. Like you can do the same thing. It's just, and that's kind, of, yeah, that's kind of what the G56 plus this car that we're seeing. It's kind of what it has. It kind of has that sloped back roof a little bit, mm -hmm. which seems to indicate that maybe it is a, it is this little crossover that they're talking about. We'll see. I mean, we, I, I just want a good driving car. Like, mm -hmm. 
I need something. I need, I need to have like really good gas mileage too. I mean, it's like now we're getting with this new dual clutch transmission. It's like, okay, we're, we're getting good numbers again. I remember my 2012 manual transmission S was getting, I mean, of course the MSRP has changed, but it was 27 in the city. If you get a manual now, the gas mileage goes down to 23. It's like, okay, we we're with BMW. You know, we we need to get the the gas miles. Like you look at the, the gas miles on a three series, it's crazy. It's the same as what's on the countryman. And the car has see, more see, I'm starting to think I drive I'm starting to think I drive too slow because my MPG in sport mode is thirty one on my yeah. Cooper on my Cooper S with a JCW tuning kit. Yeah, that's really good, man. Yeah, and everyone I talk to is like, oh, I get like 23, 24. I'm like, I get 31. How are you getting this lower this lower MPG? I, um, in my mini, I think I was like at the end. I was like right at 24. It was like maybe 23.9. And I had a tune on that car. I was ripping that car, man. Yeah. Ripping that. And at the time, too, gas was $4 a gallon. Everybody was freaking out. Bro, the fill up a mini was like, it was nothing. You put 10 bucks in that thing. Bro, I'd be ripping that car, you know, like I wouldn't you wouldn't feel it. And well see, I remember I remember back in 2011, 2012 when I got my first mini, it was a 2006 Mini Cooper S. I remember I don't remember how much gas was back there, but I remember spending sixty dollars to fill the tank up. Damn. I don't know how that was possible, but I remember it happening. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's it's gonna happen again. I'm telling you, like the crazy thing, you're looking at the gas prices and and, and and it sucks, but it's like for my business, it's like, you know, we're, we're blessed that we sell cars that are fun to drive, but happen to also get really good gas mileage. Yeah. Like, and that's why I always talk with Minimax. I knew like, regardless of the market, regardless of how they're doing, like when things got rough again, the gas prices start going back up. The economy starts going back down. Okay, let's get back into fuel efficient cars. Like that's that's why we were created in the first place. Mm -hmm. Go back to the beginning again, all over again. And that's and in, like, yeah, the 1959 min, the, in 1959, Sir Alec Isagonis, the mini that he designed, it was in response to a fuel crisis. Create a fuel efficient small car that can carry four people comfortably. Here we go. Boom. Done. <laughs> Happen all over again, man. And it's like. People need like we're still, we're still going through we're still going through it, man. The pandemic, we gotta see how this thing whole thing plays yeah. out. But you know, it's we, we, but like yeah, it's interesting how people it's interesting how people are are saying like oh I gotta have a crossover, gotta have this, gotta have that. I'm like okay, fine, we'll give you your crossovers, but they'll be many, yeah. they'll be small, yeah. and they'll have great fuel economy. <laughs> Telling you when when gas was at four dollars a gallon, our used car lot looked like Gibson's truck world. It was just truck, 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 truck. Because I'm telling you, gas goes to four dollars, especially if regular. Like we're blessed in Florida. There's places that are five dollars already. But you go to four dollars and you got someone with a 28 gallon tank, bro. That's a lot of money. Yeah, there's a lot of money, and you're only getting 10 miles per gallon. I mean, like, I talked to someone the other day who put who has a, who lives in. I know someone in the other day who lives in Iowa, and they filled up their tank, the tank in their uh, Chevy Suburban, hundred dollars. The mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like a hundred dollars, that would be that would we'll be a pandemic. No, thank would, you. Yeah, a hundred dollars would be three fill ups in my car right now, at least where oh. I live. Three, three fill ups on my car. Um, I got like I said, I got a family, we got going through a pandemic, so you know, every little bit of cash you got, you know, you got to enjoy life, you know what I mean, but you got to put it away. That's why that's why you know, people own minis because they're enjoying life. That's the whole point when you got to be safe, put the money away. So when the days get raining, you know, you should ride around in a mini. Yeah. And the, the, but the mini is just such a, the mini is a fun car in general, just, to, just, to, just to have. And depending, like uh, people always talk about like minis being unreliable, like being unreliable. And I'm like, yeah, there's been a few, there's been a few model years where they were kind of hit or miss. I mean, not all, not all the, not all the years are unreliable. But there's been been situations. But it's like gotta just the problem is people people are buying cars, and they're expecting it to be like they're trying. The problem is they're it's a, it's a mini's a small car. They're they're cross they, people are cross shopping it with Toyotas and Hondas, thinking they're going to be these uh, these like change the oil every once in a while things. Still a BMW product, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like you have to treat it as such. 
And when I get those customers that come in, you know, they're looking for a $8,000 mini and they rolling up in a Toyota Corolla with the 180,000 miles on it. And I'm like, Oh man, you ever, this is going to be your main source of transportation. Like, you sure you want to do this? <laughs> like, Oh, it's just oil changes. Right. It's like, well, no, you, you got to keep up with this stuff. And that's the biggest thing. It's like with each other, like ourselves, like if you keep up with ourselves, you know, God willing, you live a long, healthy life. Same thing with your car. Like if, if you're putting bad fuel in all the time, you don't change the oil. I don't care what kind of car you drive. Okay, maybe your Toyota might last longer, but it's like if you're that, if you're that type of person, you need to be driving a Toyota. You don't need to be driving anything else. Yeah, and I mean, I've encountered I my uh, race. I call it my race car. It wasn't really a race car, but my race car mini. That thing. I was the seventh owner, and yeah. the last the last three owners. No, the last four owners treated it like hell it had when i bought it it had it, when i bought it, it needed a full engine rebuild because they didn't put the correct gas in it they never changed the oil the one of the pistons basically blew itself apart and dropped pieces into the oil pan and that car when it was fit after three years when it was finally finished re being rebuilt that thing ran like a top and was practically brand new it drove it ran beautifully drove beautifully the guy i sold it to I think I don't know if he still tracks it or not, but he tracks it down in Arizona with down in Arizona with his um with his Porsche. So he like alternates between the two cars and cool. still and still drives it. And that car's running solid that car's running solid. That's cool, it's, man. It's because it took someone who actually cared about the damn car to right. take care of it, put it back together, get everything, spend the money that needed to be spent to do that. Otherwise, the amount of money I spent on this car, I could have bought a perfectly good condition used Mini Cooper, but this car had a little bit of pre pedigree to it, a little bit of a little bit of charisma. It had a little bit of history. It had this whole. There was something. There was just something special about this little car. And if I didn't do it, it would have ended up in a junkyard. Correct. And, and I say basically save saving it from a junk, saving it from the from the from the a junkyard. You've given it. You've basically bought it another 10 years of life at, at the at the most correct and plus the more importantly you enjoy doing it mm -hmm. and well, there, were, there were moments where i didn't enjoy it but the but the yeah, end it's result, challenging the end result when it. you finally have the car and you're driving it and you're enjoying every second of it yes. and, and then the worst part of the worst part of that whole process was really when i sold it because yeah. waiting, waiting for the car hauler to arrive to take it take it away a lot of a score of song yeah that, <laughs> emotional man you put a lot into that thing man yeah like, and then you're like, it's like literally tear jerking watching that car yeah, yeah, yeah. get loaded up onto the car haul or being taken away for the for the last oh, time you gotta look at it too like you have to be proud of that because somebody was apparently it was good enough for someone to want to buy it yeah and i mean i would have rather have had it go to someone who was going to drive it and enjoy it than to see it being hauled off to a junkyard correct you know what i mean like someone's going to enjoy the car yeah it's Especially when it's like a, a lot of enjoyment, you know what I mean? Like with this crazy world, man. Like that's that's pretty crazy. You can pass something to someone else, and they can have the same enjoyment and memories. It's like that's crazy. Well, it's I mean, crazy. I was trying to, I was trying to find. I had this great idea once, that, or that I wanted to buy back my first mini. Now I know it's currently on coilovers, and it's currently wrapped in a metallic blue vinyl. But I wanted to find out where it was, so I started searching around, and the owner, the guy I sold it to you back in 2015 still has the car, and he's only put in that amount of time. I, I sold it to him with like 97,000 miles on it, and it's currently at 110,000 miles. Mm -hmm. So barely driven, really. He takes it out and autocrosses it on the weekends. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's cool. The car, the car is, still, is still running. It's still driving. And I was concerned it would be in the salvage yard by now. <laughs> yeah, but if, if he's autocrossing it, that's – he's putting some pretty good – I mean, they're hard miles, you know. Yeah, so but it, I autocrossed it when I owned it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if that's what you're mainly going to use it for, I guess it depends on how hard he's going into it. But he takes but, he takes care of it. I mean, the, things, the thing is, I think the vinyl that's on the car was more of a protective measure. Gotcha. I mean, the paint was start. The paint had a clear coat failure in, at one point, anyway. So there was a spot on the clear coat that was failing. So better to protect it. When I sold it, when I sold it to him, the the uh, air conditioning compressor was starting to go, or the yeah. not the air conditioning compressor, the blender that mounts inside the dash. That the only way to take it out is a two thousand dollar process of removing the entire dash panel and everything to get it out of the car. <laughs> 
It ain't doing that. No, when when I finally got to that point, I was like, well, I could do this or I could trade it in. <laughs> or or I could not trade in or I could sell it. So I ended up selling it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, well, get to that point. It's like, yeah. say la vie. Yeah. Like, I don't know, so, uh, we got some comments in here. Um, Joseph Gravino, F55 all wheel drive. Yes, I think they should make the uh, if I think they should offer all wheel drive on the hard top. <laughs> Amazing, man. Because yeah. once you do that, then the possibilities for like the G GCW, JCW <laughs> motor in that car, that would be oh, that would be lovely. Well, there was a room, there was a rumor, there was a rumor that the GP3 was supposed to be all wheel drive. Yeah, any that way, like. Because if it's based off of that platform, it, it would have to be on the new chassis. If they in the development, if they that was already set like that mm -hmm. in the early development, then they could possibly figure with the old chassis or the current chassis. Yeah, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah. See, what was funny though is when they developed the F fifty when they developed the all wheel drive platform to begin with for the for the R six Countryman, they te they tested it out using an R fifty six. So. We know that there was a. Uh, we know that there was the possibility that they could have done it in a hard top, and they just didn't. They just didn't do it. I tell you what, though, they're gonna have to. I think they gotta do something like that because the new Golf R. If you looked on uh, Carwile when he when they tested it quarter mile wide, they ran twelve three, which is crazy. Like, so with this new car, okay, we'll, we'll have the weight, and we'll, we'll have this motor. So if we can get an all-wheel drive with that size, like right around 3,100 pounds, like, oh, man, it's game time, especially when it comes to the tuning market. Yeah. Like, oh, it would be it – just, it just, you need something like that that kind of gets people, like, talking about it. But wouldn't, like, but wouldn't then – wouldn't then the um, – since the JCW Clubman is the same size as the, R, as the Golf R, wouldn't that then be the competition right there? You have two all-wheel drive vehicles? Yeah, but the, I mean, you're talking 12.3 versus like 13.1. That's 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 a different ballpark, man. 12.3, 12.3 is man, that's fast, man. That's like you're getting into like previous gen, like M3 was like like when the, when it first came out with the you know 414 horsepower, you're running like those low 340 is running low 12s mid to low 12s so if you can get a forty five thousand dollar hot hash running low 12s before a tune and once apr gets a hold of that car it's going to be on but that car weighs less than than the clubman yeah the and clubman does weigh it does weigh more it doesn't weigh as much as the countryman but it does weigh about, i think right. it weighs, it weighs more and it's a different type of car man it's like i think they they put the work into this particular car man they they made because you know i feel like the you know the clubman the M235, like all these cars are sharing the motors and the chassis, and it's like, okay, we'll just put them in all of them and see how it kind of turns out, tune them a little bit differently. But that, the difference is it's like, okay, so if you got this this four-door mm -hmm. all-wheel drive, it's like, no, make this car, you got to make it put up some numbers, man. It's got to put up some numbers. And, and Volkswagen hit the nail on the head. You're running 12.3, boom, you got automatic press. That's automatic. You got a 12.3 out of a four cylinder. That's crazy. If you go back to the 2000s, like, man, 12.3 was when you were running. It's crazy. Like, but, and the crazy thing, too, is there's not many tuners that are tuning the Clubman or the Countryman or the GP. Like, I, I keep on going to Burger's uh, site. I haven't seen nothing yet. And I would think that there'd be more of a market for the tuning because we give with the all wheel drive. Like, that'd be a nice launch. I mean, so if you're running low 13s and you can get minis into the 12s, that just sounds good. You got 12 second yeah. mini. You know, you, you need that credibility. You need that. You need that on the forms. You need that. Well, on see, the what would have been what would have been great is many many missed an opportunity with the clubman to take it touring car racing. Yeah, like either they that were, or like they were taking it touring car racing, and they chose not to because the car was supposed to be considered a gentleman's touring car, basically. A, a luxury they were trying to consider it a luxury car but mini's not so, yes mini has luxury features but mini isn't a luxury car mini is a sports car in my opinion yes it's, it's front wheel drive, but sports car 
it's got to be like the way Porsche does it. Like yeah. Porsche first start driving driver's cars, and then you can add the luxury to them. Yeah. Like many, you can do the same thing. You can go full on sport, leave it base. Yeah. Or you can add, you can add luxury to it. I mean, you could add. You could take a JCW Clubman, add every luxury option that you could possibly want on that thing. Leather interior, the works. Go out there and just blast the door, blow the doors off of other cars with it because of the way it, the way it's built. It should have been. It could have been a touring. It could have been a race. It could have been a racing champion. They if they had actually chosen to. Yeah, they, they should have. We needed to see those like those those twelve second quarter mile times. We needed to see that on like I said, people's comment section. Like if you start getting that, I'm telling you, that's why that that twelve three on that Volkswagen is so important because I'm talking about it. You know, we're talking about it right now because it's crazy. Like even a low thirteen second mini. It's kind of crazy, man. Like that's that's fast. That's like old school M3 fast. But I haven't seen the tuning market like really step up on these new JCW motors because I want to see 12 second minis, man. And if yeah. we can get into the 12s, then dude, we should be able to get into the 11s, man. That's a good motor. I don't care if it's an M235 BMW. That's a mini. I don't care what people say. It's a mini. Yeah, you, people can say whatever they want about the BMW M235, the BMW X1, the BMW X2. Yeah, it's a mini. And the up and the BMW One Series over in the UK, they're all minis basically. Mini, it's cool. I like them. They're minis. Like I can't, I can't be mad at them, man. I get it. They, that's how they make their corporate money. You got to spread it out. That being said, that being said, I've driven an X2 and I've driven an, and I compared it to a J or to a Cooper S Countryman. And despite the X2 having more horsepower, it was the most dull thing to drive on the planet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you have to get the like the M Sport package to get the upgraded suspension. Upgraded See, I don't know if even I don't know if that it would even if that would even make a difference with that vehicle. It just seems it just seems there's something missing with the X2 that the that the Countryman has. Yeah, just yeah. I, or maybe I think, or maybe it's the X1 that's really just the that that's really just the failure out of the group. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious with the the M235. Like my lease is up. At the, at the end of this year, it's like I really want a JCW Clubman, like. But if they're not offering anything special, and if BMW are offering something crazy on the M235, it's like if it's within the budget, I got to I'm a family man. I got to be within the budget. So I'm just gonna. I might, I might switch out the center caps on the wheels to the JCW center caps. <laughs> but they need to tune it, man. Like if I get that car within a week, I need a tune. So whoever's out there dining. Uh, Burger Motorsports, NM Engineering, all you tuners out there, you need to kind of get get your, get the ball rolling. We need to start seeing these twelve second minis. You know what I mean, it's very important. See, I had a I had a Dynan tune on my Cooper S, and it was because it was because I was told by Dynan and by several technicians that if you have a Cooper S with a JCW tuning kit, you and you want to do a Dynan tune, you need to do a JCW Dynan tune. So I bought the JCW Dynan Elite tune. And I kept I kept throwing boost pressure faults, mm. so I finally got I finally got rid of it. Sold it to, sold it to a guy who has a JCW with the B forty eight engine, no issues at all. Turns out it's not that the it turns out the issue is the fact that apparently the Dynan tunes only work on B forty eight engines and B thirty eight engines. They don't work on B thirty six or B forty six. Mm. So they won't work on my Cooper S and they won't work on any of the current JCWs unless it's the JCW Clubman or Countryman because those are the only two of the B48 now. So the JCW heart, current JCW hardtop, the Dyna 2 will not work on it. Hmm. So it's just, it's just one of those weird, one of those weird things. Race chip, they'll work on the, will work on those cars. Um, Burger tuning will work on them. NM engineering, new speed will work on them. But it seems like others, it seems like Dynan won't for some reason. And there's a lot of dealerships I've encountered that are actually not doing Dynan installs anymore because of issues that they've had with having to replace engines. That's not good. No, I think I think my dealership had to replace three or four engines that they had Dynan tunes on them. But somebody needs to just come out with something. I just want to see it. Like, I want to, I want to, 12, 12, 7. I mean, well, so if, um, if my friend Mario out in California is watching and you do too, and he does tuning on BMWs and well, he does tuning on minis, maybe he could work on a tune for a mini that would give it, that would put it into that, into that, uh, into that bracket. It's definitely possible. I mean, if, if you're running a, a 13 one, a good 93 octane ECU tune, even a piggyback should get you at least 12, nine. 
I mean, even with all wheel drive and launch control, and then if you're putting out that type of torque, it's 331. Well, what's you know, funny, what's funny is there's little known inform there was a little piece of little known piece of information about the GP when they were testing the GP on the Nurburgring. It's time that it did was seven minutes fifty six seconds. The time for the BMW M2 at the time was seven minutes fifty eight seconds. Mm -hmm. They went back and redesigned the engine on the M2 to be seven minutes fifty four seconds. <laughs> Because we can't have because we can't have a mini be faster than BMW. <laughs> if they focus on what, that's what I'm hoping with this new car. Like with the chassis, if if it's a good chassis, you know what I mean. Like yeah. Because remember, in in Europe, there's the what is it the the 128 Ti. So it's front wheel drive. It has 265 horsepower. So yeah. In my head, I'm thinking, dude, that's got to be the new JCW motor. Like, and that's, that's, that's what it. I. I was thinking, okay, they're doing this, and it's in this car. The pro, the only drawback that I saw was that it didn't have a manual, and that was going to piss people off. <laughs> I don't but, I want that motor in that car. Yeah, if it's, if it's in that car, there, yeah. make it happen. Five horsepower B forty eight engine. Bring it over to the U.S. Put it in a JCW hardtop. Boom, done. Ooh, it's easy. It, it should be easy because they they they're already sharing the M two thirty five. I mean, so we already have we already have the GP. We already have the GP with the three hundred and one horsepower engine. The funny thing Ooh. is, someone had said a while back, and it was someone with with Mini, who said that they were probably they ended. Up, I don't know why they didn't do it, but there was someone that that uh, that was overheard saying that they were going to put the three hundred and one horsepower engine in the regular JCW hardtops. I don't think they, I mean, they don't need to do that. Like that would be nice, but that 265 horsepower motor that to me that makes sense because it's such a big bump from the 228, plus the torque is a lot more as well. Like that motor alone would change the dynamic of that car, especially with the new look in the front. Yeah, like, oh my god, that oh, and then when you the tuning capabilities and the weight, and it'll be more readily available, especially on the pre owned market. Like getting a GP, it's 50 G's. Like you can get a base JCW for thirty five grand. Yeah, you know, with some nice features. So okay, I can get that with that motor, and then have like just a suspension and a wheel. Like, dude, that would be amazing. Mini, please, please, BMW, put that motor together. It makes sense. We, if it makes dollars, it makes sense. So I like what Sonic, I like what Sonic Liberation said here. When I see a BMW, I say to myself, "Nice car, but that dude overpaid." <laughs> Probably leasing it. Hopefully he's leasing it. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. I mean, if you're my thing, I found out with um, my thing. I found out with um, when it came to uh, certain cars is if you're going to be driving like very low mileage every year, leasing is ideal. Yeah, with with these cars, with expensive cars, mm -hmm. fours, three series, five series, you lease them. They're, they're meant to be leased. Mm -hmm. The way they price them is because they're overpriced. So when they come back, so whatever residual they put on them, let's say sixty percent, it's that, there's no way that car is holding that much of that. But it's an inflated price anyway, so they don't even care. Yeah. So that's why you lease those cars because once the warranty problem, expires, it, yeah. No, my problem is I drive so much every year that I can't. That leasing doesn't make any sense to me because I put twenty five, thirty thousand miles a year on a car. And like, like for you, you couldn't do it. Like I do like twelve thousand miles a year. And plus, I'm a, I'm a car nut, so like every couple of years, I'm, I'm releasing another one. I can't help myself. Well, the, believe it or not, believe it or not, that car you saw in that picture that I showed you on Instagram, mm -hmm. that that's that car's leased <laughs> hmm? with all those modifications. <laughs> I was gonna get a nice car when it, when it gets turned back in. Yeah, well, you should have seen the last one he built. He he built that he that he also leased. He sold they sold that to a friend to a friend of mine who she loves that car. Really, it's an it's an incredible one. It has a race chip tune on it, so it has 290 horsepower. Nice. Yeah, 290 horsepower will go into a manual gearbox, and they said you couldn't put 300 horsepower on a manual. <laughs> yeah, you can make it work. Well, I think it's more of the I think it's more of a that they could do it. They just didn't want to spend the money to engineer it. <laughs> I tell you what was nice. I I drove a second gen GP. It had the the JB plus on it. So it had the piggyback and he had it at the lowest setting and man, it, it, it just changed everything. Like the speed of that, just the way it boosted 
And with the handling of those tires and brakes, it was probably one of the best front wheel drive cars I've driven. And like yeah. with that power, and it had an NM short shifter on it. Mm -hmm. Like that thing was so precise. Like this one right here has 300 horsepower. Nice. It has, it has like a manic. It has like a manic stage three in it, and he has the shifter in it. It's the I don't know what company makes the shifter, but it's the one that like preloads the gears. It looks like a rally shifter. Hmm. Like when you shift the car, it tensions up the the shifter for the next gear change, so it's like an instant throw. Oh wow! That's so there's crazy. that. Yeah, there's that one, and then the other one that will be in a video on Monday is this one that I got to drive, which is owned by it's owned by a technician at the BMW dealership, and it's a really really cool, nicely specked out one. But he modified it. He said the first within the first weeks of him owning it, he upgraded the pistons. <laughs> Damn. So it's been modified. That thing, that's it's been modified. It has something done with the suspension that the front wheel track is actually pushed forward slightly. Mm -hmm. so if you look at the if you look at the car, it, the front wheels are actually sitting <coughs> forward and the wheel arch is slightly, but it's supposed to improve the handling. Mm -hmm. So really, he really liked it. Went all out to 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 with this particular with this car, and I got a chance to drive it. And the thing's a little monster. Dude, those it's, those things are amazing. It's like that feel. If you can just bottle that feel into like maybe in something that's comfortable, remember we have to make it luxurious. I get yeah. But that feel, if you can bottle that feel and put it into the next car, man, that would be amazing. That would be perfect. Yep. And we'll have to just we'll have to just wait and see what happens with the fourth gen mini. We don't know yet what they're necessarily what they have in store. We know what we're seeing is that it's going to be a, a much different style. Hey, it doesn't have to be, you know, maybe just the evolution, you know? Yeah. It, it just has to drive good. And that was the whole thing is BMW and mini styling, styling aspect or design aspect, design uh, aspects or the way they do things. They want to be evolutionary, not revolutionary. The, right. car, the car's styling is evolving, not going so dramatically. Like, like Porsche, you know what I mean? You, you, you take what you have and, you keep working with it. You keep working with the steering. You keep tweaking the suspension. You know, the weight distribution. Like, a brain, please. Mini, I, I believe in you. <laughs> Ten years. I, I, think, I, I think Mini is. The, this is a Mini shirt, bro. Yeah. Like, all roads lead to adventure. This is a Mini shirt. Mm -hmm. So I rep, I rep Mini. You know what I mean? So it's like, I know, I know, just like with you, because like, if Mini's doing good, we're all doing good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the thing that I've been doing noticing lately on YouTube is if I do anything related to 2024 Mini Coopers, the fourth gens, or anything related to the facelift, those videos get watched like crazy because people want to see that. Yeah, it's, and it's it's good. And like it's crazy the amount of people that have been like looking for convertibles. Like we've been getting some really good attention, you know, I think because gas prices are going up, so people are looking yeah. for cars. And like we have a lot of good stuff, and I think with with the culture at the dealership, if, if if someone's tired of like the headaches and just the the day to day dealing with COVID, you know what I mean? Like if you're gonna buy something, unless you won the lottery, you can go get a, a GT3 RS, which God bless if you can. But you know, if you're gonna spend thirty five thousand dollars, then you can have the time of your life, have a great experience. You know, I would say the majority of many salespeople, if they understand the culture, they understand like even if they're not really car people, if they just people people and it's about if it, to them, if it's about customer service, then I think that it'd be a really good experience for everybody, you know, because like nowadays, everybody, everybody wants to feel good story. You know what I mean? That's like the name of the game. People want to feel good. And if they can feel great, then why not? Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of owning a mini is you're buying, you buy, you buy a mini because you want to have something fun to drive around and you want to have, you want to enjoy your drive. You don't buy a mini because you want to go from point A to point B. Oh, you, there, there's something in your life that you're looking for. And it's pretty neat. Cause like a lot of times, you know, when just like myself, when you just graduated from college and you're getting your first mini, you're making decent money before kids. And all of a sudden you have kids, like I would never look at a countryman before, but okay, now I have kids, but I don't want to give up my mini because why should you? You want that fun. And, you that, want and that's exactly I, what I told people. I was telling people they were asking what was the point of the larger clubman and countryman. I said they're yeah. for people who want who've owned minis since day like owned minis or loved them since day one, 
they have kids now, but they don't want to give up the enjoyment of driving of driving one of these cars. It. They want to also bring their kids along and have their kids enjoy it with them. Yeah, because and that's the best part is because you know I remember as a kid, and the reason why I'm a car guy is because I remember like my dad had an old MG, my uncle had like an old school Ford T bucket yellow like. Like these cars, I guarantee you, these kids will remember their, for the rest of their life. That's the cool thing with the Mini, especially if it's like a cool color or combination. They'll be talking about it when they're, they'll be talking to their great grandchildren about this car. And that's what's amazing is it's something that it's such a great dealership experience. And then just the experience and life that you get from it. And then even if they go eventually get another brand, something else, you know, it's still something I guarantee they would remember. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the dealership experience and service is, you know, not everything is perfect. It can't be. But it's like, man, compared to a lot of other dealerships, it's like it's really good. Well, let me ask you this. Hold on. I'm getting some feedback from my li live audio. Stand by. There we go. All right. I was going to say, how would you like to have this in your showroom? <laughs> you know what? Rocket. I bet it's fun. I've driven it. It's incredible. I've driven it. It's incredibly fun. It's the car that ever. It's the car that everybody loves to hate. There's people out there who love to hate on this car, but driving it, it is just such a hoot that you don't even think about the fact that it's lifted up at the rear. It has a gigantic wing on it. Has a giant hood scoop. <laughs> it looks like a Hot Wheels car. It is a Hot Wheels. It basically is a Hot Wheels yeah. car. And that, and that car, that is a J, That is actually a factory JCW Roadster. <laughs> Dude, that that's a nice car then. Yeah, I mean that thing is that thing was loaded from the factory. Dude, and the the roadsters and the coupes, those were fun cars to drive. Like if you put that tune in it, oh my god, it was like it was so different the way that they drove, especially the coupe, because of the additional bracing that was on the car. Yeah, like uh, it was like it, it felt different. Like the tail would come out differently on you. Know, and that car. thing right there has Jace has the full Manic Stage Three in it, so it has about three hundred horsepower. But what, what was funny, about, I learned this about the Roadster and the Coupe. What was funny about those cars, they were actually, everyone thought they were based off the hardtop, and then they added bracing in. They mm -hmm. were actually based off the convertible, and then they added the bracing in. <laughs> and they fixed the, the roof on. Yeah, yeah they, they, they cool. fixed off the convertible, because the convertible already had, the, already had right. some bracing in it. So yeah, it, was always, it was always the Roadster. That was, and what was cool about that is that people were like, oh, that's a hardtop convertible. I'm like, no, it's just... A fixed roof. They're like, oh, like yes. It's like remember like an S two thousand with the fixed roof. Like that was just cool. Or like if you get the Miatas, like now there's on a hard top convertible. Before you would put a fixed roof on it. Like you know, auto crossing, man. <laughs> like, yeah, my only complaint about the my only complaint about the um about the coupe is that, and it's not really a complaint, is that it when you're sitting in it, the thing is like completely enveloping you, and you're like. Just, the roof's just completely all the way around you. Now, people will complain about blind spots. They'll be like, well, the blind spots are horrible. Don't they have, why don't they have blind spot detection in a Mini? And here's my take on that. If you adjust your mirrors correctly, you don't need blind spot detection. <laughs> right. Because yeah. I, I, I got in a car today. I got in a car today at my job, and I was looking at the mirrors. I'm like, why are we staring at the side of the car? <laughs> Why aren't we looking at the car? Why aren't we like looking at the lane next to us or the car next to us so that we see where they are rather than making sure our the side of our car is nice and shiny? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure in the next couple of years we'll probably have that, and then it'll be just people will be used to it. Well, the next couple of years it'll probably be the mirrors are completely gone. It's just it's just cameras because no one can be bothered to actually adjust their mirrors correctly and look out the side and, and and look when they change lanes. I had a car today nearly on the highway. Getting onto the highway, I'm in his. I'm in the lane he wants to get into, and he's merging right in, right into my side. And if I had not accelerated further forward, he would have. He would have just gone right into me, and just didn't even didn't even think about the fact that there might be another car there in the in the other lane. It's like, well, I'm gonna merge over here. I hope you all can see me. <laughs> like we all can see you, we can't all necessarily get out of your way. <laughs> yeah, people, just, some people just don't pay attention with that. Yeah, it's uh, it's Florida. Oh, that's Florida. This is this was Kansas. <laughs> oh. Is nice. it just is the traffic is bad in Florida? Oh yeah, yeah Florida's <laughs> uh, it's pretty crazy, man. 
So um, let me see. So we so we are we're all aware that Mini Takes the States was was postponed again, which was an which was an inevitability at this point. Yeah, I have no clue. It's like we we haven't really been doing much of anything at the dealership when it comes to like events or anything like that. So it's like it's just going to work, making sure my customers are taken care of. Yeah. You know, Would you know. want if you had the option? Well, many t- states actually started in or didn't they start in Orlando in 2018? Um, I believe so. But the thing is, I got kids, so it's yeah. like when I leave work, it's like man, like. I'm I'm in automatically in dad mode. Yeah, you don't think about the other the many you don't think about many events too, too often. And it's like it's like my wife she's a speech therapist, so it's like every little bit of time that we have, it's like we we, we plan everything out so we can spend as much time as possible. So it's it's a good life, but it's like I, I do enjoy hearing customers talk about it. Mm-hmm. Some boys like like hey you know you should try these different clubs, try these different things out. And it's a good experience, like if they get into it, and then you'll have like that mini customer probably for a really long time. Like if they're like about it, and that's like, oh man, they go to the tail of the dragon, and like exactly. it becomes like a part of them, and it's like, okay, that's that's cool. You'll hear you'll hear about you hear all the stories about minis about minis on the Mac, tail of the dragon, uh, mini takes the states. I think the minis take Route sixty six is one other one. Minis in the Ozarks, minis in the mountains. <laughs> that's a cool one, like. It'd be cool one day, like, like probably when my my kids are older, to go to like the Dragon or something like that, like to actually have like a vacation like that. That'd be pretty cool. Take it, take a JCW clubman with you. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, just go, cor- just hopefully go it was like tuned. <laughs> just take one of those. Just go carve corners. Just have just have as much fun as possible, right? Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. But hey, go ahead and stay, or stay on the line with me when we when we log off. But I'm gonna go ahead and let everybody know that we're gonna call we're gonna go ahead and call it a a day, but I or call it an evening. But I want to thank everybody for watching my live interview with Nick here from Orlando Mini. <laughs> there, got it right. Yeah. <laughs> Many deals, baby. Yeah, and if anyone is in Orlando looking for a Mini Cooper, go see Nick. He'll be happy to help you out. And I'm sure he has some great ideas as well on, on mini configurations. Yeah, you want to order some? That's that's my specialty. So there, well, there you go. But I want to thank everybody for watching. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. As you all know, I upload a video every Monday currently at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time or Central Daylight Time. I forget what time it is right now. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment. You know that you know the drill. I got other interviews planned, including a live interview with someone from Mini from Mini Plant Oxford coming soon, as Ooh. well as I'm working on details, ironing out details to have an interview with Mike Payton from Mini USA. He's the VP for Mini USA, so that should be coming down the pike at some point. I'm not sure when, but you'll probably know uh, when we're going to do it when I do because it might not be scheduled. It might just be a whoop. We're having an interview. But you'll be able to see it. I'll make sure it's up on the web, up on the channel, so you all can watch it and, and enjoy. But anywho, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you, I'm not going to repeat myself again. But um, some of you all who do follow me on Instagram know that I have stickers now. So if you want stickers, these are reminiscent of my logo on the side of my car. They're kind of a simplified. I want to say I call it kind of an Art Deco Miniac logo. And they have the number 37 with the Miniac in the corner. So a little bit of Patty Hopkirk in there as well. I've already sold four of these. And I got to mail them out tonight. But um, I have them available if you want to get in touch with me about what the or where to get them. Actually, if you want to buy them, they're $2.99 each. And you just go to my PayPal and it's the miniac at yahoo.com. And you can order one if you want one. And I'll send them to you. But anywho... Tune in on Monday when I actually have a video on a GP2. That should be a fun video. That's basically you're going to watch me fall in love with a car. <laughs> it was a very fun car to drive. And uh, if I had my uh, if I had my way, I'd probably buy it. Um, Friday, I am Friday around 2 p.m. T- this week. I am planning an interview with Alex Hart, who is a works on the assembly line at Plant Oxford. So that should be a fun interview. I chose 2 p.m. because that's 7 p.m in the evening, his time in London. 
So wanted to make sure it was easier for him rather than easier for me. But that should be a fun interview as well. But anyway, I'm going to let everybody go. You all have a fantastic evening. And as always, life is too short to drive a boring car. So, uh, Nick, what do we do? You got to drive a Mini. Drive a Mini? Yep. We got to drive yeah. a Mini. <laughs> all right. Well, Nick, stay with me when we when we log off. But I want to thank everybody for watching. I'll see you all in the next video, in the next live stream. So uh, let me click this little button here and see everybody later.